Pink Pastel Cosplay here and welcome to part 2 of our Bowsette Cosplay video. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to make these cool spiky accessories, this crown and I'm going to go over some of the sewing involved in the cosplay. If you guys would like to see more tutorials and learn how to make your own cosplay costumes, please check out our website where we have tons of cool tutorial books for various characters that can help you with your own cosplay creation. We also do new tutorials every single month on Patreon, which includes a tutorial book, templates, and a video. Now we're going to make all the accessories for the cosplay. For this, I'm mostly going to use 5mm EVA foam and a more foam clay from Lumen's workshop. Let's start with the crown. So, I drew out this crown shape. I have a template available for this in the description below. Then, I cut the pieces out with my craft knife. I then used some contact glue to glue the seam together at the very back. To make the small balls on top of my crown and the eyes on the front of the crown, I used some foam clay. I just took a small piece and rolled it out on my mat. Once they were completely dry, I then took my pieces of foam clay and glued them onto the crown with some contact glue. He's looking super cute now. Now for the horns. To make my horns, I printed out a digital template I made. This template is available on our website if you would like to get it as well. I cut out my template and then used this to trace onto some 5mm EVA foam. Just like with the shell, make sure that you trace the registration marks as well so that you can line up the pieces of foam properly. Once I finished drawing them out, I then cut out my pieces with my sharp craft knife. Then I started to glue my pieces together with some contact glue. I just put a little bit of glue on each side, wait for it to get tacky and then press the pieces together. Be careful to line up your registration marks correctly so that the horn starts to take shape. To help cover the seams on my horn, I use some gesso canvas primer. Gesso is like a thick white paste. I just take some and put it over the seam and then smooth it out with some water and my finger. I normally add about two or three layers of gesso to completely hide my seam. Now for the spiky cuffs. To make these, I used some one centimeter thick EVA foam and cut out some strips. I measured around my wrist around the top of my arm and around my neck to get the measurements for these pieces. To shape my cuffs, I just used some heat from my heat gun and rolled them into shape. Then I connected the seam at the back with some contact glue. For the neck piece, don't glue the seam together at the back. You'll want to add something like Velcro or a pin there to keep this around your neck. Here you can see the cuffs slip on and off super easy. Now I had to make lots of spikes to go all over my cuffs. I took some foam clay that I got from Lumen's workshop and started to roll out my tiny spikes. This took a while because there are lots of spikes all over Bowsette's cuffs and neck piece. Now I had to prime everything with some wood glue, just like with the Bowser shell. For the small spikes, I decided to prime these first before adding them onto the cuffs. I just used some toothpicks and stuck them into polystyrene so that I could easily prime them. Once the cuffs were primed, I then used my airbrush to spray the base black and to spray the small spikes silver. I could now take my spikes, cut off the bottom and then glue them onto the cuffs with some super glue. Now they look super cool and spiky and they're ready for the cosplay. Now let's get back to finishing off the crown. To make the mushroom in the center of the crown, I just used an acrylic half sphere that I got from a craft store. It fits inside my crown nice and snug. I then used my airbrush to paint the sphere a light pink. For the white dots on top of the mushroom, I took some white leather and cut out small circles with my scissors. I then used some super glue to glue them onto the sphere. I also used some more super glue to glue the sphere into the crown finally. To attach the crown to my head, I took a small piece of EVA foam which I cut out for the bottom of the crown. I then took a small hair clip and glued this onto the EVA foam. And finally, I glued the foam disc into the crown. Now I can attach this crown onto my wig and it will not fall off. The final step for my crown is to add just a little bit of brown shading with some oil paint. Now that the accessories are done, let's move on to the wig styling. So, to make my Bowsette wig, I've got insulation board, two blonde wigs which I bought from a local wig store, some warbler scraps, 
and a big bolt. So the first thing we need to do is start making the structure for the ponytails. To do this, I'm drawing out my shapes onto some insulation board. I'm then going to use a craft knife to cut out these two shapes. I'm then going to take some hot glue and glue my two pieces of insulation board together. The shape right now is very boxy, so I'm going to take my craft knife and start to carve it into a more teardrop shape. So, like I mentioned earlier, I have two wigs for Bowsit. The one is going to be the base, and this one is going to be sacrificed for wefts to cover the ponytail. So, I'm turning my wig inside out and I'm going to cut out all the wefts. Now that I've got my wefts, I'm going to start taking them and with some hot glue, I'm going to glue them all the way around my polystyrene shape. You want to start at the back and move your way forward. And there we have our ponytail ready to connect to the wig. Now we need to make a support structure underneath the wig so that the ponytail stays up. To do this, I'm taking some old warbler scraps that I keep from old projects and I'm going to heat up some pieces and cut out two strips. I'm then going to use these strips to make a cross which will sit on the back of my head. Once I've finished making the base cross, I'm then going to take the bolt I had earlier and wrap some more warbler scraps around that. This is then going to be connected onto the cross and sit on the back of my head, where the ponytail will connect to. So now we're going to assemble the wig. You're going to take your base wig and slip it over the bolt sticking out the back of the wig. You're then going to cut a small hole in the center of the polystyrene shape, put some hot glue into the hole and then push it over the bolt at the back of the wig. Now that the wig is fully assembled, we can start styling it. So to start with my fridge, I'm going to be taking it and backcombing it and teasing it so it's a big fluffy mess. I'm then going to slowly start to brush and comb some neater pieces over the teased bits so that it still looks neat and clean. My favorite hairspray for wig styling is got to be hairspray. It's fantastic and has really really strong hold which is great for cosplay wigs. Now to attach the horns onto the wig. So underneath my wig I have a headband. On the headband I have some wire wrapped around it and a small piece of wire that protrudes outside of the wig. On the inside of my horn I put three layers of one centimeter thick EVA foam. I then used my craft knife to cut a slit down the middle and this will then be pushed over the piece of wire sticking out the wig and it will stay in place. Now you can just pop on the crown and the wig is done. To keep the wig on your head, you can also glue a small clip just like with the crown on the inside of the wig, or you can use a couple of bobby pins to secure it. Now for the bodysuit. At the very top, there is a small gem. I was super lucky and found these clear gems at a craft store, and I still had one left over, so I used it for the suit. I just took some blue nail polish and painted it on the back to get the color. To make the casing around the gem, I took some black warbler scraps, heated them up with my heat gun and then rolled them out and put it around the gym. To do my sewing pieces, I'm using Yaya Han's leather fabrics. I got a wet look one and a nice shiny leather one. Both of these are four-way stretch fabrics, so they're super easy to work with. I am not the best at sewing, so I always try and make things from clothing I already have. So, to make my pattern for my bodysuit, I took a leotard that I already had that fits me very well, and I took this and used this to trace out my bodysuit pattern. Because this leotard is more like a bunny suit, I'm not going to be tracing around the arms. Instead, I'm going to roughly draw out the shape of the top that I want. The bodysuit ends up being one front panel and two back panels. To put my pieces together, I'm going to pin them along the side. Now I'm going to take my pinned bodysuit and sew all the way along the side seam on both sides with a straight stitch. Once that's done, I'm then going to sew halfway up the middle at the back and then I will add in a small black zipper. Once you've basically sewn the suit together, you're going to want to try it on and refine the shape and take it in as necessary. This was the final result for my suit. I hemmed the top with a zigzag stitch. Zigzag stitches allow for the suit to still be stretchy without popping any seams. 
I also hemmed around the bottom of the legs with a zigzag stitch as well. I also wanted to add two more lines in the front for some extra detail. This was super easy, all I had to do was fold the fabric and stitch the line on the inside of the suit. I also glued on the small gem and casing I made with some super glue. The suit is really basic and not boned or anything. I wear a corset underneath to help give me the shape and then I wear my suit on top of it. Now for my gloves and stockings. To make these I used the wet look fabric that I got earlier. I measured around the top of my arm and the bottom of my wrist to get my measurements for my arm piece. I then cut the piece out, folded it over, pinned it in place and sewed it up the side seam. For the leg piece it's very very similar. I just measure around my thigh, around my knee and around my ankle and then draw out a long tube. I then cut the piece out, folded it over and stitched up the side. If you're struggling to get the vinyl to go through the machine, you can use a Teflon sewing foot or you can use something like Vaseline or machine oil on the fabric so that it will slide through. To finish up my stockings and my arm pieces, I just folded over the hem and stitched it with a zigzag stitch. And that's how we made our Bowser cosplay. I really hope this tutorial has been helpful and you guys can now make your own Bowser cosplays a little bit easier. If you guys do use the video and have made your Bowser cosplays using this video, please tag us and show us below. We would love to see the results. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and follow us on some of our other social media platforms so that you can see more of our work.